Hello friends, in today's video, we shall go through Kelvin Lancaster's Attribute Model or Characteristic Model. Kelvin J. Lancaster gave his theory in 1966 in his paper, A New Approach to Consumer Theory. He mainly signified that consumer's demand for a good depends upon its attributes or characteristics of the product rather than the product itself. That is, if a consumer is demanding a product, then he is not demanding the product as such, rather he is demanding the attributes or the characteristics of that good. And those characteristics of that good is what is giving utility to the consumer. So here Lancaster emphasizes on the characteristics of the product paving way for the demand of that product. That is why his model is also named as attribute model or characteristic model. Say for example the attributes of a car. There are different types of cars with different features such as a car's outlook, its pickup, interior spacing, fuel capacity. So when a person thinks about buying a car, the first thing that comes to his mind is features of the cars like what should be the outlook of the car. Or what type of car should be bought, how much its pickup should be, what should be the interior spacing, like if, if it should be a four-seater or a six-seater, the fuel capacity of the car, the color of the car. So all these attributes or features are taken into account by that person who is going to buy that car. We shall take another example of a house. If you want to purchase or construct a house, you will first of all go through the attributes or the features that the house should possess. Like how many number of rooms should my house have, the size of the rooms, where should my house be located, the quality of the flooring, the quality of the bathrooms, the tiles, etc. So here more focus is upon the attributes or the characteristics of that house rather than the house itself. Because it is those characteristics or features that give utility to the consumer. Same is the case with a mobile phone as well. When you purchase a smartphone, you specifically focus on its features such as its RAM space, pixels, storage capacity, camera quality, screen size, etc. So these attributes of the product gives utility to consumers. Now we shall see Lancaster's model with food products as an example. So when we take up food products, the common features or the characteristics that we can see in food products are calories and vitamins. So let us denote calories as A1 and vitamins as A2. So Lancaster's model assumes that utility is a function of these attributes. That is, individuals attain utility from the calories and vitamins that they receive from purchasing the food products. Suppose if there are three food items, good X, good Y and good Z, good X being rice flour, good Y being wheat flour and good Z being chickpea flour. Now even though these three are different goods, they possess the same characteristics of calories and vitamins and they come under the same category of flours. We have already denoted A1 as calories and A2 as vitamins. So if we express the calories and vitamins to be attained from these three different goods in mathematical format, then we can write the equations as A1 is equal to A1x multiplied by x plus A1y multiplied by y plus A1z multiplied by z. Here A1x represents the number of calories per unit of good x. Similarly A1y and A1z represents the number of calories per unit of good y and z respectively. Similarly we can write the equation for vitamins as well. That is A2 is equal to A2x multiplied by x plus A2y multiplied by y plus A2z multiplied by z. Here A2x, A2y and A2z represents the number of vitamins per unit of good x, good y and good z respectively. Now let's see this example graphically. On x axis we have the calories and on the y axis we have vitamins. In the diagram we can see three upward sloping straight lines with different slopes denoted as x, y and z. These lines are called product rays. A product ray can be defined as the quantity demanded of a particular good and the varying amounts of attributes that will be obtained from that quantity given the price of that good. So in this example, we are talking about calories and vitamins as the attributes of the three products. In our example, good X is rice flour which possesses the features of calories and vitamins. So the product ray of good X shows the quantity of rice flour purchased and the amount of calories and vitamins present in that quantity given the price of 1 kilogram of rice flour. So here, if 1 kilogram of rice flour contains a particular combination of calories and vitamins, then 2 kilograms of rice flour would double the amount of calories and vitamins. 
Thus, higher points on the product ray OX represents the purchase of rice flour in higher quantities and consumption of higher quantities of the product means higher amounts of calories and vitamins that will be obtained from that quantity at the same time higher expenditure on those products as well. Similarly, product rays OI and OZ also shows the quantities of the attributes A1 and A2 that is calories and vitamins respectively provided by the quantities of wheat flour and chickpea flour purchased by the consumer. But if you are purchasing a particular quantity of product, how will you measure the proportion of calories and vitamins present in that particular quantity of product? So in order to do that, suppose if we take any point on the product ray OX and from that point, if we draw a straight line to the x-axis and y-axis, we get the amount of calories and vitamins that will be present by purchasing that particular level of the product. So here point X star shows O A star 1 amount of calories and O A star 2 amount of vitamins that will be obtained by purchasing that particular level of good X. Similarly, points Y star and Z star also show the amount of attributes that is the calories and vitamins that can be purchased by buying good Y alone or good Z alone. So if the consumer spends all his income on purchasing one particular good, say good X, which is a rice flour, then point X star shows the amount of calories and vitamins that can be purchased by buying good X alone. Similarly, the points Y star and Z star also represent the combination of calories and vitamins that would have been obtained if all the income of the consumer were spent on either buying good Y alone or buying good Z alone. Now suppose if the consumer want to purchase both good X and Y that is rice flour and wheat flour then the bundles of calories and vitamins that will be obtained by purchasing both those goods can be represented by joining X star and Y star. Now this straight line is called as the efficiency frontier. It is nothing but the budget line itself. So an efficiency frontier can be defined as the various alternative combinations of the maximum amounts of the two attributes that is calories and vitamins provided by various products which the consumer purchases given his income and product prices. So in our example, if the consumer is to purchase rice flour and wheat flour together, then an efficiency frontier will show the various combinations of the maximum amount of calories and vitamins that will be obtained from the purchase of rice flour and wheat flour given the consumer's income as well as the price of rice and wheat flour. Now if the consumer is opting to buy good X and good Z that is rice flour and chickpea flour then X star Z star line represents the efficiency frontier and that line represents the combinations of the calories and vitamins that will be available from purchasing good X and Z. Similarly, if the consumer is opting to purchase good Y and Z that is wheat flour and chickpea flour then that efficiency frontier represented by the line Y star Z star shows the combinations available from purchasing good Y and good Z. Now suppose if the consumer is purchasing all these three goods that is rice flour, wheat flour and chickpea flour then the possible combinations of the calories and vitamins is represented by that triangular area that is X star, Y star and Z star. Here the question arises at what point the consumer will maximize his utility. So the consumer will maximize his utility at that point where the indifference curve of the attributes calories and vitamins is tangent to the efficiency frontier. So in the figure we can see that the indifference curve U-0 is tangent to the efficiency frontier X star Y star at point E dash between the product rays OX and OY. It shows that the consumer gets the maximum utility from the purchase of a combination of the two goods rice flour and wheat flour as that combination of the two goods provides the consumer with the required amount of calories and vitamins. Similarly, the consumer attains maximum utility from the purchase of wheat flour and chickpea flour at the point where the indifference curve U0 is tangent to the efficiency frontier Y star Z star at point E between the product rays OY and OZ. Now this is the case if the consumer is opting to purchase a combination of two goods. Now what if the consumer is purchasing only one good that is represented here at the point X star where the indifference curve U dash dash zero is tangent to the efficiency frontier. So if the consumer had purchased only good X then the attributes calories and vitamins would have been obtained by purchasing only good X that is rice flour. Then the consumer would have attained a maximum utility at point X star because at point X star we can see that the indifference curve U dash dash zero is tangent to the X star point. 
Similarly, if an indifference curve was tangent to the efficiency frontier at point Y star or Z star, then it would mean that the consumer would have purchased only good Y or good Z and would have obtained calories and vitamins from the purchase of that good alone. Hope you all have understood what Lancaster's attribute model is. If you like the video, do share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.